Hello YouTube, it's Sean from the Pompey Games Room here, back with my first video in the new house. It's finally set up, the office is finally up and running, and I finally have my collection out, part of it. You'll notice there's some empty shelves, well, semi-empty shelves actually. Um, I'll take some pictures and pop them in. There's loads of odds and sods I've still got to find spaces for, um, including this huge pickup video. Um, and it, this is by far the biggest pickup video I've ever made. I've got literally stuff all around me here. Uh, it's absolutely huge. I would say this is about six months worth of pickups and they have come literally via bundles that I've just, as I knew we were moving, I just left them in storage because of the COVID stuff and all the isolation areas that you need to have to keep stuff away from you um, just for a little while. To lose any bacteria or anything like that they might be carrying. Um, yeah, so it was ideal really that I could just literally leave stuff in the boxes they arrived in and just leave them. So some of this stuff I bought, I only opened it about two days ago. Um, and some of this stuff, I kid you not, has stayed in the boxes that it was sent. And I even had a few messages from people on eBay that had sold me the stuff saying, has it arrived? Is it all right? Is it all good? And I was like, yeah, I'm moving. Don't worry, it has arrived. Um, yeah, so it's been an absolutely crazy, crazy, I wanna say, we moved end of December and I'm now fil filming this towards the end of February. I've just noticed my light is in the camera here, just in case you're wondering what that is. My daughter calls that the Toy Story lamp. It's a bit like one of those um, lamps that jumps on the ball. So is that all right? That's good. You can just pass it. Anyway. Um, yeah, so some of this stuff has uh, just sad. <laughs> it's just not playing ball, is it? Um, there we go, that's good. Um, some of this stuff has sat in isolation, I would say, for well over sort of four or five months, something like that, but um, yeah, uh, anyway. I'm so glad to be able to film this because I wanna use the rest of these shelves to sort of add to the collection because, like I said, my collection now is centered around games that I'm passionate about. I'm not just gonna go out and buy, say, like, you know, um, a title I've got no interest in playing. Um, I'm I'm not going to be a hoarder. I've, I've I got through that stage of my collecting probably about three years ago, when I sold off a lot of stuff like Amstrad GX four thousand. Anyone? Yeah, eight bit console. Never ever had any real memories of the eight bit era. So all that sort of stuff went years ago. But um, you do that when you first start YouTube, don't you? You just buy everything. Um, quite literally. So um, yeah. So I've trimmed down my collection, and uh, I used to have it all in little boxes that I kept under the bed. Um, and uh, obviously we've moved to a bigger house now and I've done a conversion here for my home office, which I'm now sitting in now, which is brilliant. Um, and I've got a place for my collection to be put out and also a place to work during the day. So it's absolutely brilliant. Um, the move itself went well. Uh, thank you for everyone. I even had some messages from people on the day who uh, have got my number on Facebook and stuff like that, wishing me good luck. So thanks very much for that. It was. It was a crazy experience moving through COVID um, and uh, quite stressful, I'm not gonna lie. We moved into a house that was, uh, it looked like it had never been cleaned ever. Um, it was pretty bad. So with a sort of two and a half year old running around, it was really stressful. And my wife is expecting our second as well. So it's um, to say we wanted to make a cleaner house uh, pretty fast would be an understatement. So. Um, I've just come off the back of uh, probably since Christmas trying to paint nearly every room in the house, which we've nearly done. So um, it's, uh, yeah, it's been a bit crazy, guys. But I have been um, keeping up on videos and I have popped in on a few live streams over the um, time that I've been sort of painting rooms and things like that. And I just want to thank everyone who, um, you know, if I watch so many videos during the day at work and I try to comment as much as I can. I don't comment on everything. Sorry, lockdown haircut. We've all got a lockdown haircut at the moment. Um, so, a bit crazy, but my wife cut it. So, um, yeah, it feels like I'm back in school again. It feels like I've got the curtains again. So, I'm very happy, she did a very good job. So, um, what was I saying? Um, I've completely lost train of thought. Uh, what was I saying? Uh, oh yeah, that was it. Um, so yeah, I just wanna thank everyone for all the content you guys have put out. It's been absolutely brilliant and it's kept it's kept me going, I'll be honest, because there's been stages where it's been incredibly stressful the past few, <laughs> the past few weeks, uh, past few months, and just getting things done, and um, yeah, just trying to get through what are crazy times at the moment, um, and obviously working on top of that as well, and uh, yeah, just um, it, it's it's a part of my life that I'm always going to look back on and think, wow, we did an amazing thing during the COVID uh, 
COVID outbreak and we moved to our sort of this is our forever home. We're never going to move from here. This is the ideal location. This place we want to be, the place we got married and things. So we're, we're absolutely over the moon to be here. But um, it's a stage in my life I'll always look back on and go, God, we worked hard. <laughs> But uh, yeah, this is what I mean. Uh, this is why I think this is so important for me to actually have this space now because I can actually have my stuff out and I can leave my work stuff. And that's the problem I always had. Um, my work stuff was always around the house, at the last house, because it was so small. And um, yeah, but anyway, you're here to see video game pickups and not hear me rambling. But uh, anyway, just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who's put content out. YouTube's such a fantastic place. And um, Every new YouTuber that joins adds to that. So if you're thinking of doing a video, guys, and you're on the fence, just do one. You know, it doesn't... Just do a video. That sounded pretty... pretty hard. Just do one. No, do a video, guys, because it's such a great community on here. And, um, yeah, so six minutes of rambling. Um, I'll have jump cuts in this video, as I always do now. Um, and uh, if you want to stick with me, brilliant. Just put me on sort of two speed. I, I'm sure I sound even more crazy on two speed video. And you'll blitz through this video in no time. But, um... Yeah, let's get going. I mean, I've got a mixture here of games um, and consoles. Uh, and to be honest, I sold off more than I've kept um, because I have gotten back into the bundle buying, which is great. And that's such a great way to build a collection because you don't have to spend a lot of money. You buy a bundle, you keep the bits you want and you move on the bits you don't. And to be honest, it's been a, it's been a real, real good thing because I've really, really enjoyed sort of seeking out these bundles and seeing, say, uh, this you know this game sort of sticking out the corner and you see it and you think no one else has and when you win it it's even better so um i've got some amazing deals here so we're going to touch on it so straight off let's start off with a console um that uh i only, I only kept one game from it and you probably just saw it flash up there and uh that is the playstation 2 and that is formula one 2001 uh with michael schumacher and his ferrari on the front um, yeah, I've got massive memories of playing this game when I was in college. I used to love this game. Um, and it was out of a bundle of about 13 games. And this is the only one I kept. But the reason that I got this bundle wasn't just because of this game. That would be a bit mental. Um, but it was for, um, at the moment, obviously, with me doing my LMA Manager videos, I've been using my little brother's PS2 which is here. Um, um, my little brother's no longer with us now, so things like this are really important to me. Now, um, I the PS2 was one of the first consoles that I bought sort of outright with my first job, um, and I always wanted to get one back in the collection fully boxed, and I scored big time with this. So, um, my last survey, uh, property survey, before lockdown began, crazy saying that, isn't it? Um, it seems so long ago. This is how long I've had this, by the way. Um, and it was actually before the second lockdown, I think it might have been. But I did a survey in Portsmouth. And this came up, I kid you not, for £35 on Marketplace. And it came with 15 games, one of which I kept, the other 14 I shifted on. And this, and it is immaculate. It is just in such good condition. Um, and it's, it, as like I said, £35 for this. And it's one that I've, you know, I've wanted to get a PlayStation 2 back in my collection for so long. I remember buying this console and coming back on the bus after buying it and just literally watching everyone that got on the bus because there's certain parts of Portsmouth around that time that had a bit of a reputation for being a bit of a, a nutcase area. But um, I'll open it up and let you guys have a look. But it's still even got sort of the PlayStation sort of, you know, the sticker which has just been slipped to actually get in. I mean, it's absolutely insane in here. It's got absolutely everything. The one thing it does have is it's got a sort of Frankenstein uh, PlayStation 1 wire controller and a, a sort of DualShock player, PlayStation 2 controller. So obviously something's happened with that. Um, it comes with three official memory cards. Uh, I can't hold all three, but all three of them. So I'm going to pop those down there. And it comes with another controller here. So you know, I've got two controllers now, but I've already got three others that I use. And then the actual console. Now, I'm not going to get the console out. We've all seen the PlayStation toy just held one up. But it's all in there. And it's all still bagged. I'm not going to get it out as it starts to pull the packing out. And you can see the other cables. I actually double-checked. Um, that's why they're in there. But it's all all in there. It's got the box insets and everything. £35. I mean, I'm not going to leave that at all. So um, I picked that up on the way back from one of my last surveys. And I couldn't believe it. When the lady went and got... It was one of those things that I never thought was going to happen because 
I tried to pick it up three different times, and every time I went to pick it up, um, she had a different excuse. Um, and I thought, oh, she doesn't want to sell it, or she's been told, you know, that it's, you know, selling it way too cheap and stuff like that. But uh, no, it was genuine. No, she, uh, she just said no. Very crazy. And before lockdown, my business partner and I just had so many property surveys we were doing. People obviously preempting COVID and stuff, trying to get, uh, trying to get plans drawn up and stuff during the during the lockdown and stuff. So stuff never goes back in the box, does it? It just never goes back in. So let me just try and do this. Um, and yeah, I turned up to pick it up. And uh, I did think originally she's, you know, she's, she's not going to sell it. It's going to be in awful condition, or she's going to, she's going to want a bit of extra money, which I have had before. Someone has said to, you know, well, if you want it, someone else has done this, and you're like, well, I've just driven all the way, you know, to come get this twenty minutes, and you think sometimes she's got to leave stuff. But um, yeah, anyway, she was perfectly happy, and I ended up giving her forty in the end because I can only get two twenty out. So um, for forty quid, let's say, not thirty five, a. Um, a game that I've got massive memories of playing, and I, I, t I kid you, I cannot wait to go back and play that. Um, oh God, John, it's back in, Jesus. There we go, done. And it's not back in any good, but an amazing score there for 35 quid in Portsmouth. Um, yeah, I mean, just yeah, so, so happy to get this in the collection. And this is what I mean, recording this video, I've got empty shelf space down here, and this will just go nice sort of on the bottom shelves with the, with all the games that I've got here. I've got like three areas that I've got PlayStation 2 games at the moment, which is just a bit insane. But, uh... So, finally got a box PlayStation 2 back into the collection, which is great. Um, the next items I'm going to cover is some video capture software. Like I said, um, my Elgato uh, just died. Um, and it was a game capture HD, HD that I used to have. And um, this was another pickup I got. This was £90, um, but I've since sold my old one for spares and repairs, you know, tested, untested, not working. And yeah, I got, I think I got 35 quid for that, which I was really happy about. So really, this has cost, cost me next to nothing really. I thought, what, what's that, 55 quid, something like that? And that is the Elgato again. I've always really enjoyed using their software. I used to have a Dazzle card before that. Who remembers that back in the day? Um, yeah, so uh, this is supposed to be really good. Um, the guy used it twice apparently trying to get into live streaming. It never happens. So, uh, but yeah, this is all fully boxed. Um, I haven't used it yet, so I don't know it works. Um, might be selling another one for spares and repairs otherwise. But it's all uh, all in there. Uh, all the cables and everything like that. So yeah, I'm gonna. And you know what? I mainly got this because, like I said, I haven't got a lot of more games to buy for my collection. I keep saying that as I sit here with a huge stack of games. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to recording gameplay for these games because all these games behind me and in front of me, I've got memories of and I've kept for a reason. You know, like I said, I'm not just I'm not just literally filling the shelves with stuff I'm not going to play. Um, I'm I'm really really sort of picking out the gems in my collection now. So when friends come over or family um, come over and you think, you know, what well, actually, do you fancy playing some games? You know, because usually I will have memories of some any of my friends with these games and. Um, yeah, now I'm I'm so excited about finally having a place to store this collection and just keep the games out that I've got so many memories of. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's finally good to finally be able to start to capture some game footage again. Um, because I was really enjoying doing my LMA manager playthrough. I really enjoyed that and I've really missed doing it. Um, so I can now finally do it again, which is great because I used to record it before I started work. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing if we can get that mighty Exeter City up through the uh, the football echelon, the football pyramid, and see how far we can go. Um, and also build the San Zero for Exeter City, let's be honest. So, so the next system I'm going to move on to is um, the Wii, the Nintendo Wii, which I have in a bag here, which you can just see the top of it here. I'm not going to lift it because there's about four things on top of it and it'll fall. Um, I've got a loose uh, Nintendo Wii and it's a console that I've got a lot of memories of playing it with my um, nephew, uh, Mario Kart. Um, and uh, I just thought, you know, there's a few games I want to add to it and we'll just see what happens. And, uh, you know, the games you want to get for the Wii nowadays are just so cheap, it's unbelievable. But I actually bought these, I didn't get these in a bundle, so I paid cold, hard cash for this stuff, which doesn't tend to happen nowadays with me, apart from a few items that I will obviously point out down the way. But um, yeah, so the first one um, that I got uh, is a game that I actually saw, um, it was a YouTube I saw playing it. Um, 
that was so long ago. I, I, I'm not even gonna say. Um, I saw a YouTuber playing it, and uh, there was a nice hockey thing on it. And now you can probably see here, I've got a signed picture of Wayne Gretzky, greatest hockey player to ever live, um, over there, uh, which is part over. I'm a massive ice hockey fan. I used to play roller hockey and ice hockey. Um, not to a very high standard, but it was more recreational um, and a good laugh. Uh, anyway, di um, I digress. Uh, <laughs> I saw someone playing this. I don't know the YouTuber, um, but it's uh, Marion Sonic at the Winter Olympic Games, and it has got ice hockey on it, and it it looked absolutely brilliant when uh, when, I, when I saw them playing it. It was so good, and I should have done this for the PlayStation 2 game, but this thing's like immaculate. Never even been played. Um, no CEX stickers on it or anything, and it's you know the disc literally looks like it's never been played. Um, yeah, there's, no, there's nothing on that at all. Um, so yeah, I've got um, I've got a grand total in my collection now of seven Wii games. Check me out, guys. Seven Wii games. Yeah, I'm just trying to think what I could fill with seven Wii games, but uh, yeah, I'm going to add to that by the way because the Wii is uh, a console I've got a lot of uh, a lot of memories of. But now that's eight. And nine, because there's another one coming now. So um, yeah, Mario and Sonic at the Winter Olympic Games cost me a princely sum of four pounds seventy-five delivered, which I thought was actually quite good. I knew you paid as much in postage as I did for the game. Um, and the next one really intrigues me because I love the last game, and I for some reason I thought it didn't have a manual, but it, but it has. Um, and uh, yeah, um, I'm a massive fan of this game on the N64, so. Um, I just I had to get it, and that is Goldeneye. Um, I don't think this is supposed to be as, I don't think it's supposed to be very good for memory, but it's a game I really wanted to try. Um, and like I said, I've only just set everything up, so uh, a lot of these games I haven't even tried at the moment. But I do have even memories of them, or I've seen gameplay on them, and they've intrigued me. But this again is, um, is fully boxed, and brings my Wii titles to nine. Um, which is uh, a massive collection, not even into double figures yet, but uh, the um, the game again itself doesn't even look like it's been played, which, I mean, you know, just look at the manual, you know, it's, it's absolutely crisp in there. But, um, so two Wii games into the collection, um, ready to be put on the shelf and uh, played at some point with friends or family, whatever. So, um, so where do I go next? Um, Another console, I hear you say. Okay, another console. So, um, let's start off by saying, uh, probably I touched on this towards the end of last year, some of my last videos, the things I really wanted to repurchase with videos of Rob. Um, and uh, it's something that I've been on the lookout for ages. I had a save search and one came up um, and I paid, I paid a good amount for it. I paid like 310 quid for it. Um, but then sold, um, I've kept one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 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 yeah, I've kept seven, I thought I had eight, no, I've got eight, sorry, I kept eight titles and the console and something else it came with, um, and I sold off 14 other games, and, uh, so this bundle has cost me, I think I worked it out, so I might write it down, um, this one cost me, so all in, this has cost me 120 quid. I'm selling all the other stuff, which is immense for for what I've what I've gotten. So let's start off. Let's give the console away straight away. It's the obligatory game that I don't think you can even buy a console without this, and it's Sega Rally Championship, a game I've covered. My first real review that I ever did on my channel. Um, this game is immense. I've got so many good memories of this game. My friend Adam Pierce, um, and uh, yeah, it's. Um, it's like immaculate inside and it's even got funny enough there's a few of these that have have got this it's got this little flyer in i haven't seen this in many saturn games the saturn is a console I've, i like i said i've got so many memories of my friend adam um i'll just show you this but uh it's yeah it's a little pull out manual and it's uh what's it advertising so you could buy a sega rally top i mean can you imagine walking around the streets in the uk wearing that or you could buy virtual fighter gear. Or even better, look at the hat. Look at the hat, guys. You know, you can't say that us gamers aren't trendy. So, um, yeah, anyway, um, the disc is absolutely scratched to uh, high heaven. But uh, anyway, I'm sure I can pick up an extra 
Sega Rally Championship disc for not a lot of money, but the actual case itself is in really good condition, which isn't always the case for Saturn games. Saturn games are notoriously bad for everyone knows I'm sort of preaching. What was it with Sega and cases? The Dreamcast. I wouldn't even touch a Dreamcast. I've no inclination to ever buy a Dreamcast. I don't know why, it just never really sort of uh, never really sort of appealed to me. Sega Rally, like I said, one of the games my first review videos I ever did on my channel and I hold this in such high regard. But a little story about Adam, by the way. We um, we all love a story. Um, we, Adam had some money for his birthday and Christmas uh, when this was out. And he had the chance of buying this or a PlayStation 1. And I think I heavily influenced him to buy, because I was such a Sega Mega Drive fan, to buy the Saturn. And he bought the Saturn. And... I think deep down he wished he had bought PlayStation. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, I don't know. I still speak to Adam now, so maybe I'll ask him that one day. Um, but uh, yeah, I do feel a little bit guilty for that because uh, there's also a great story that he bought um, Euro 96 for the console and could never score on it. Literally, I don't think he ever scored a goal. He owned the game from new. He hated it. Um, and it was so bad. <laughs> he was, yeah, he hated it. With a passion, but... Um, the next game is Daytona USA, um, arcade classic, everyone everyone must love the Daytona series. The only problem is there's a massive, massive sticker on the back and it is for uh, Gala Shells. Um, is, there a, is there a store called Gala Shells? I've never heard of that. Anyway, anyway, uh, this is <laughs> totally, totally sort of a blank there. Uh, this one is fully boxed again, and the disc on this is actually immaculate. Um, uh, this is one of the ones I looked at, because this is a game I'm really looking forward to putting in and playing again. Um, yeah, so we've got Daytona USA into the collection. Now, the Saturn is a, a system I'm going to be buying a lot for. Uh, so like I said, I've got a lot of memories of it. I sold it a few years ago when I owned one, because the box was beat to... It was just beaten to high heaven, and it wasn't worth keeping. Um, and I shipped all my stuff on with it, because I didn't have the space to store it, but now I do. So uh, I'm rebuying stuff. And like I said, um, I think I said 135 quid all this has cost me. And, you know, something like that. Whatever I said at the beginning is what I bought. I can't find all this now. It's on all the games. Um, yeah, um, so I was, you know, I'm over the moon. All this for about 130 odd quid. You just can't beat it. So this is just the games on. So next one is Sega Worldwide Soccer 98. One of the first football games that I actually played on the Saturn. Um, apart from Euro 96, actually. Um... But this was one of the first football games I played on the Sega Saturn. And uh, it was really good at the time. It really reminded me of ISS on the um, N64. And um, yeah, just brilliant, brilliant game. Uh, the gameplay itself was, it was really immersive. Like you could score just the most ridiculous goals on it. It was a bit like Adidas Power Soccer. Um, and it's really cheap to pick up. It's actually a bit of an unsung hero, this game. Um, and the stadiums are pretty cool on it as well, I seem to remember. There was about six, six or seven stadiums, but they were loosely based on them. Um, on sort of uh, club grounds at the time, say like uh, the New Camp and um, I think Marseille, the Parc de France had just been opened as well for the World Cup in '98. That was that was a pretty heavily publicised stadium on there. I think there might have been Wembley on there as well. But uh, uh, the next one is Alien Trilogy, and he says it before he even held it up. Um, a game that I've been dying to get hold of because I feel that this actually plays really well on the Saturn. I've played this on the um, PlayStation and the Saturn, um, and I really enjoyed the Saturn version. I think it's because the Saturn version, uh, I always associated this game, because this was in the arcades, and it was a Sega cab, I seem to remember. Um, and I always remember playing this in the arcades with a Sega branded cab, so I think it's maybe just me thinking, oh, it's Sega, so it's gotta be better. But this again is in top condition. Like I said, this is why I paid the amount that I did for the bundle, like 310 pound, um, because I knew I could sell on the other games that I wasn't interested in. And there were some there were some pretty big hard hitting titles in there, um, and I was amazed that my maximum bid was three hundred and eighty or quid, and it never even got anywhere close to that. So, um, yeah, I knew I could sell the other games and make pretty much all my money back. So, and next one was a disappointment. The guy said that all the games had their manuals, but this one doesn't, and that is Duke Nukem 3D. My older brother used to love Duke Nukem. And it's a series that I've played fleetingly, I would say, on a, across a lot of consoles. 
Most notably, I've played it on the N64. Um, and uh, it's one I, I can't really get into, but for nostalgia purposes, for memories of my older brother, who's also no longer with us, um, my videos always take a, a sort of um, a very, very depressing turn. But uh, yeah, <laughs> um, memories are very important to me, as I always touch on in my videos. So um, this is a bit of a nod to my older brother, and I will get into it a bit like The Legends of Zelda. I'm not a massive Legend of Zelda fan, but I will do that because I remember my older brother playing that a lot. So, yeah, Duke Nukem 3D. I was told that these had all have manuals. This is the only one that doesn't. And, uh, yeah. So, Duke Nukem 3D. It's a great way to start your collection, this. And um, I'm, I'm so, so happy. Especially to get this next one. And that is Loaded. Such a great game on the Saturn. I remember playing this. Uh, Adam actually rented this uh, three or four times. And, um... Yeah, absolutely brilliant, brilliant game. And um, it, it always reminded me a bit of um, of the Chaos Engine for the Mega Drive. In fact, there's probably, yeah, I mean, you know, Chaos Engine screenshots on the back there. I don't know why people do this. I don't know why I'm doing it now. And obviously loaded here. So it's like a top-down shooter adventure game. Um, really addictive, really immersive. Um, I used to love this game. Um, there was about... So I'm trying to remember actually. Um, I think this was really well reviewed when it came out, but it came, did it also come out on the PlayStation? I seem to recall, and this just got panned after the PlayStation One came out. But um, yeah, I've got so many memories of playing this version of the game. Um, yeah, really, really happy to get this into the collection. Um, and yeah, for for the money I paid for it, I mean, not even onto the actual other things that came with yet. So this is the last of the games that um, uh, that. That I kept apart from one that's in a box version, um, and that is Manx TT Superbike. Very, very good game. Again, I played on this in the arcade countless times down at uh, Clarence, uh, Clarence Parade, which is Portsmouth, um, and um, Clarence Pier, I think it is. Is it Clarence Parade? Anyway. That means nothing to you. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, brilliant, brilliant game. And uh, you used to have the bike you could sit on in the arcades. And again, just playing this, it, it's very Sega Rally-esque. And um, yeah, very, very crisp game when you play it now. It still looks decent now, still holds up, I think. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to throwing this back on the second time I've actually owned this game because I owned that with Daytona and... Uh, Sega Rally, obviously, <laughs> the first time around when I bought it. So, um, yeah, so really happy with my Saturn purchase here. Um, I sold on an absolute load of games and made some money back. So this has literally cost me, uh, well, for what you see what's coming up now, it's not cost me anything in the grand scheme of things. Um, so, sorry, off of camera now. Um, and so uh, the first thing it came with, uh, what the bundle was, additional controller which is box now I love all the accessories and this thing the controller actually is in just brilliant nick in there um, I don't think it's got its baggy on it though but I do have an additional baggy from a, um, a Mega Drive controller which isn't out of its box yeah so uh, <laughs> yeah um, so I'll find that I've still got a box over there to unload believe it or not um, uh, yeah, um, I managed to get a pad with this as well, so I've got another pad, and there's another pad that actually comes in the console as well. So, a fully boxed satin pad, really happy with that. Uh, may as well touch on the other game, and this is a game that I can't wait, cannot wait to get Rob over to play um, very soon, and that is Virtual Cop. Um, now, I'm actually after the Undead box set as well, uh, House of the Dead, Undead. Um, I've missed out so many times on that. I, I think probably at least four times I've missed out on trying to buy that box set. It comes in a box set like this with another gun. Um, and I believe it was picked up by another YouTuber recently on a video. I can't remember who it was though. Um, like I said, I've watched so many videos. It's really kept me going through the decoration of the house and stuff. But um, I haven't even opened this, so I don't even know what's, if it's all boxed. But it looks like it's in pretty good nick, so... Let's get it out. So obviously the box is in really, really good nick. Again, it's got another sticker on the side of it. Uh, Gal Shell again. So uh, it must be a computer game store somewhere, but uh, yeah, pretty decent nick. And obviously the gun. Um, so you'll notice here that there is a little space here. Oh God, it's difficult. Just here, under Gretzky, under Wayne. 
Um, I'm hoping to get a CRT TV. Uh, I've been looking out for one for a long time and now I've got a bit of space to put one so I can actually play these games. But it comes like that in the box, so it's got the instructions. And you've got to remember this has cost me about 130 quid a win um, after I got the money back from the stuff that I sold on. Um, it's got the um, satin gun manual, not too sure if I touched on that. It's got the actual game manual, which is like immaculate, no folds on that. It's got the game, quite important. And we've got the gun. So uh, Rob and I, I'm sure we'll be recording a video two player. I've got to get another gun, but that's also why it's quite important that I get the House of the Dead game. Um, because the box sets are so cool. So, so cool. Um, and this is obviously going to go in, go back in a certain way and I won't be able to do it. So I'm just going to try and get it back in the box somehow. But um, yeah, uh, I'm so excited to finally have one of these. Um, I mean, they go for a loan. These box sets usually go for about 50 to 70 quid. Um, and like I said, I've been missing out on the uh, House of the Dead ones for about the same price again. So um dead happy to get this in um to the collection and start the saturn collection you know i've got some really really good titles straight off the bat um actually i've got another bundle ending at about 11 o'clock tonight so uh who knows might be adding to it let's see bundles are definitely the way to go for me now i can't stand paying for separate games which i have done don't don't get me wrong <laughs> you're gonna see the biggest hypocrite ever um i've got like three or four Games come up in a minute that I bought in separate auctions because I kept missing bundles and we just thought, sod it, you know, just do it. And the main part, obviously, is I need a console to play it on. Now, if you've been watching my channel for years and years and years, um, uh, you'll remember probably about four or five years ago I got a Saturn, the Virtual Fight and Saturn set, and it was beat. To you know, it was just absolutely beat. Um, it was falling apart, so I thought, you know, I got some money in this console, I bought it. And at the time, I think I bought it for about 50 quid, and they've just shot up in value now. Um, and hence the amount of money I paid for this bundle. And um, yeah, so I sold it on because I thought I must be able to get a better one down the line. I actually got a bit more money for it than I paid for it. So that alone managed to get a Sega Saturn back into the collection. And this is actually the box set that Adam had. So I'm um, really, really happy to get this in, and it's in absolutely stonking condition again. Top as well. And you can see why this appealed to me, um, because it's it's just in absolutely brilliant condition, and it's gonna it's gonna go so well in the games room. Um, games room. Listen to me calling it a games room. My daughter called it a man cave in here. She's only three, and uh, my wife put her up to it though. But uh, yeah, she called it a man cave. I hate that term, but uh, I suppose it is in some regards at the moment. It's um, I'm sticking with office. I don't want to have a man cave, so uh, yeah. <laughs> I hate the way that sounds. I'm trying to get the console out here, by the way. I'm not just sort of. Anyway, oh god, this is so not going to go back in the box. So, um, and it's actually the first time I've actually had the box open. Um, stay. Okay. Okay. So there is some inner box stuff missing, but there is another case here. Um, what have we got in here? Sega Flash Volume 3, so this must be a demo disc. It's got Daytona USA Championship Circuit Edition, Virtual On Tomb Raider, Sega, Sega World World Soccer 97, so I got 98, so it'll be good to give that a go. Uh, Fighting Vipers, Virtual Cop 2, Dark Savior Knights, Mr. Bones. Mr. Bones, isn't that um, that's supposed to be quite a decent game? It's probably awful. Um, Bug 2, nice. Uh, there's a demo disc here for Panzer Dragoon Saga. So I actually sold two of the Panzer Dragoon games that came with this bundle because I've got no interest in those. Um, sorry if I've upset a few people there, but I've just never really gotten into those sort of games. Um, so yeah, have got some demo discs. I doubt they'll work though because they're scratched at high heaven. So, um, so in the box we have got another controller which looks a bit worse for wear but I've got a fully boxed one. I've got the link up cables, associated cables. Um, I have the all the gumph that it comes with. All it, I love all this stuff. I'll, I'll have a look through this but yes yeah, so we've got a oh man I remember these. So in Electronic Boutique they used to have these and they used to just give them out. That's crazy seeing that again. 
crazy. So nostalgic seeing certain things, isn't it? We've got, oh, this could be quite cool. Sega Saturn. Let's have a quick look. I love these things, sorry. Oh, this is the last thing for Sega Saturn. So if you want to check out the next lot of pickups, just fast forward on. This is like a Sega Saturn catalog. Let's have a quick look, so. Some stuff on it. Sega Saturn, because really, reality hurts. Great tagline. So we've got some uh, SimCity 2000 there. Bug. That's, that I seem to recall, Bug was on um, the PlayStation as well, wasn't it? Supposed to be pretty good. Uh, Virtual Hydelide, Shinobi X. Did Shinobi X even come out in PAL territories? I don't think it did. Um, Mansion of the Hidden Soul, some great names. Um, Mysteria, Virtual Fighter 2, which was the, the box set that I got originally. Clockwork Knight, I used to love that game. In fact, I, ha I actually own that with the... Um, the last console that I actually owned, the actual um, Saturn I owned. Panzer Dragoon. Uh, Dragoon? Is it Dragon or Dragoon? No, I don't know. I can't hear you anyway, whatever you're saying. So. Uh, Sega Rally Championship 95. Sega Sports Series. NHL All Stars. I used to love that game. Played that a lot. Daytona USA Virtual Cop. Really looking forward to playing that with Rob. Uh, Thunderhawk 2. Am I even on a camera here? I am. Rayman. Didn't realise there was a Rayman game for the uh, Saturn. Uh, Johnny Bazooka Tone, that's supposed to be absolutely awful. I've, I've heard about that. Um, and there's uh, hundreds of other games here. Uh, one of Rob's favourite, Gex there, uh, Tomb Raider. Uh, virtual Boxing, uh, Victory Boxing, sorry. And Atlanta 96. Oh, I would have loved it if um, Euro 96 was there. That's obviously not going to be, is it? And then there's a full list of games that have been uh, released. So, and some of the uh, add-on accessories there. So the steering wheel, which you can pick up on eBay for about a tenner, fully boxed. <laughs> Crazy. Um, we've got the manual with it, and uh, some other cards to register it. And obviously the system itself. I mean, oh man, this is just a thing of beauty. I love these machines. I always thought, because I'm not well, quite young when this came out, I suppose I was about 11 or 12, but I always thought that there was some bolt on that you could put a Mega Drive game in there. Um, yeah, but no game in it. It's a bit dusty, it's not been used for a little while. I don't even know if this works, but uh, yeah, it's um, yeah, so happy. And that's the, that's the model I got there, if anyone's interested in the models. But uh, yeah, really happy. Finally got a Sega Saturn back into the collection. Man, it was a big mistake when I sold the Saturn last time, but... Like I said, the box was so beaten up um, that you just want to, you know, I was a lot younger then when I owned it, and you just, you know, so when you have a lot of money tied up in something, and you think, actually, you know what, I haven't got the place to store this, I'm only going to damage it further. Um, sometimes sense just kicks in and you sell the stuff on, which is actually exactly what I'm getting onto in a minute with some Sega games, um, with some Mega Drive games, obviously, which is the... Uh, the heart and soul of my retro gaming collection and is actually going to take up most of the shelf space up there down the line. And also while well, I'm recording this video because I'm setting this room up and that isn't set up how I want it because I've got stuff that I want to share with you uh, before I put up on there and also so I know what I've got a record of. And I'm putting this back in the box because this will be a nightmare to find everything to put away after. So, so yeah guys for um, 135 quid. I scored a Sega Saturn, um, eight games, one of which including a virtual gun and uh, virtual cop box set, um, an extra controller which is fully boxed, and some other games as well. I uh, couldn't be happier with that. I mean, yeah, 135 quid. Let's just say, I think I said something different at the beginning, but I'm pretty sure it's 135. Um, yeah, so happy with that. And that's the, one of the other consoles that I've added, so um, I need to find some shelf space for that and start collecting for that because. I can, well, just flicking through that little leaflet that we had, that we just looked through. Um, man, sort of loads of games that I want to get, so. Yeah, great stuff. Um, got the Saturn into the collection, which I now need to find a space for. So now we get to the bread and butter of the collection. The bread and butter obviously being the Sega Mega Drive. I need to head back the camera there, sorry about that. So, um, the first bundle I'm gonna start with was a um, multi-mega pick up. Now that I've had this multi mega here for about this video on my channel probably about 5 years. But it's always been missing its manual. Um 
and really, really annoy me. It's fully boxed apart from the manual. That's it. Missing the manual. So, I managed to pick up a multi mega bundle and it was loose and it came with a manual. So now I have the manual for the multi mega that will go in its box. Um, and this is massive compared to, say, like a Mega Drive man. I mean, it is literally huge. Um, so, yeah, I finally got a manual. This is like brilliant condition. So that will go into the box and be, you know, all together. But also, um, I sold the multi mega on and uh, I actually made about 20 quid on the whole bundle <laughs> when it's sold on the auction. So, um, I think it's just time and month that you list it on there and stuff like that and people went crazy for it. So that's since sold and I got this and the next game, which alone is about 100 quid for free. Um, I mean, I couldn't believe it. So just lucky. Um, so yeah, I got the manual, which is great. And to add to my massive collection of Mega CD games, uh, which you can just see there, <laughs> there's two classifiers, cl well, I suppose it is. You've only just got one. Sonic CD and uh, Final Fight CD. They're two pretty decent games. Um, but uh, yeah, it's... <laughs> so now I'm adding the uh, the match ball, shall we say, the hat trick of titles to the uh, Mega CD collection. And uh, that is Earthworm Jim Mega CD. Um, like I said, this game alone goes for 90 to 100 quid. And uh, I ended up getting it in the bundle, which I kept. And... Um, yeah, I kept it and then um, sold on all the rest and made the money back on it. And, you know, that's, that's the way to do, to buy a, a load of games, isn't it? You know, and unfortunately the case is broken, but um, I uh, am watching cases. I mean, you can get these cases pretty easily on eBay to find and just rip the game out of them and put this one in. So the one drawback is, and I did comment on Retro Realm, see if anyone had one, but it's missing its manual. But you know, I got the game for free, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be like, oh man, it's so difficult. I, I can't believe this. It's, I got it for free. Earthworm Jim and the multi mega, um, the multi mega manual for free after selling on the rest of the stuff that I didn't want to keep because either I have no interest in the game. I've already got a multi mega which is fully boxed, um, and also it was local as well. So um, I thought, well, you know, save on a bit of postage if the bids kept going up, I'd just go pick it up. But I never had to in the end, so. Um, also, that came with some other pamphlets. So we've already gone through, through some of them. Um, this one is the Mega Drive Extras. And again, we'll just go through this. It's not really big, it's just this page. Um, but it's got a few games on there. Ranger X, uh, Pebble Beach Golf, Street Fighter, Taz, some controllers. I love this stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, on the back there we've got... Eternal Champions, which was a game I bought brand new and was massively disappointed. Massively disappointed. And then we've got the making up the Tower of Power, the start of it, the Mega Mega Drive 32X. There's a welcome part here. Let's go through these. It's going to be a long video anyway. So, dear Mega Driver, got a personalised letter. Just saying congratulations for buying 32X. Welcome to the next level. Some games here, so we've got Doom there, pretty decent game on the 32X, I seem to recall. Love Virtual Racing, Virtual Racing Deluxe. Haven't got a 32X actually, it's something I need to add, 32X. Other ones, we've got Star Wars Arcade. Pretty decent game there, it's never played it. Let's get to page there, sorry for what I had. Next one is Cosmic Carnage. Never even heard of that game, actually. It's like a uh, fighting game. Uh, golf Magazine presents greatest 36 holes of golf. Uh, Metalhead, I've played Metalhead. Played that, I seem to recall, on the... A game very similar I played on the um, PlayStation. An Afterburner. So yeah, that is the 32X pamphlet that came with the multi-mega bundle. I kept that as well. I keep all that stuff. So, so we now get onto the Mega Drive games. So, uh, or do we start with the? Yeah, we do because I've got some pretty special other bits to show you after this. Like I said, we're not even starting yet. So, um, so what started off this bundle? buying thing for me again like I said it's been a total return to sort of retro YouTube for me 
Um, whereas you just pick up massive bundles and just go through games and think, you know, I'm keeping that, keeping that, selling that. And, but what started it? Well, I started trying to get free games, believe it or not. And I sit here with five, I sit here with a further 13 in front of me um, that I've kept from bundles, things like that, and sold on. Um, just working out how much I've spent on these games. Uh, I have spent the total sum of £165 after selling on um, all the other items, um, which I'm absolutely amazed with. I mean, it's, I've done really well here again. Um, but uh, this actually started off me trying to get hold of these games. <laughs> Believe it or not, you can pick these games up for about sort of £7 to £12 each, and that is the Strike Games. All absolutely brilliant titles. But I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to pay the best part of 40 quid to get all three into my collection. Um, so I just looked out for plenty of bundles with games I wanted to add in. Um, and uh, I was very lucky. I had a lot come up. And um, I managed to get all these pretty much for free. Um, so we're going to start off with uh, Jungle Strike. You know, what's to say about these Strike games? They're absolute classics on the SNES and the Mega Drive. Um, I have actually put them in individual baggies inside. Uh, they've all been cleaned and sealed in there. Um, I don't believe in sealing up the boxes. Um, yeah, some people do. But you know, the, the manuals hold so much dust and stuff in the boxes themselves. I mean, what's the point? Just seal the cartridge up and clean it. That's probably the best way to store them, in my opinion. Next one is in no particular order, because Desert Strike, I believe, was the first one. Uh, yeah, because Jungle Strike says the sequel. So um, anyway, uh, we've got Urban Strike. Urban Strike never actually played, but if it's any, if it's half as good as these two, then I'm gonna absolutely love it. Um, and uh, yeah, so Urban Strike again, fully boxed, uh, all sealed, cleaned and sealed, ready to be used. And did I show? I showed Jungle Strike first. Desert Strike. This came in in a bundle, all fully boxed. Uh, very very. <laughs> Yeah, standard games that you can pick up on YouTube auctions, but like I said, tightness. Um, <laughs> I didn't want to do it, so um, you know, I pulled the trigger on a few games that I just kept losing out on. Um, I just, you know, I thought, sod it, I'm just going to treat myself. So, and that I did. So, um, yeah. So anyway, the next slot, uh, I've got them into individual piles here. This pile um, was all free. Uh, these games because I sold on uh, a massive bundle. Um, there was 55 games, two consoles for some strange reason. Um, the thing, from memory, the thing cost me 275 quid all in, and I made back. Well, these were free, so um, yeah. It's, uh, so um, I am going to just put them in the pile because there's actually two that aren't in there. Um, yeah, that's good. Sorry. Um, so all these were free, and they came in a bundle that I bought way back probably November something like that because the box came in and they just I cleaned them and they just they sat there so the first one is ah real monsters a Nickelodeon classic I used to love this cartoon and if it's the platformers on the um on the Mega Drive especially late platformers this was late 90s I seem to recall 96 maybe 95 um the, you can always tell as well because the labels peel. I actually stuck this one back on, but it's been sealed in its bag. Um, yeah, uh, this is a really good game. I played this around one of my friends, um, and the platform it's really difficult. Um, and yeah, if you're if you're trying to get hold of um, a, a platformer that sort of flies under the radar, this is actually a decent decent um, game. It stands up pretty well. Um, so yeah, definitely seek this out. Commonly costs about thirty quid, um, but I got it in the bundle for free. Um, and it's all fully boxed, which I've just shown you, and it's really good condition. So I'm really happy to get that into the um, into the collection. Um, it's it's a platformer. Uh, I believe that it's one of those ones that you you all have different abilities. There's three main characters. I forget the names of them. Um, uh, there's Crumb, uh, Ablina, and it it kiss. Oh man, that's bad. I used to love watching this. I can't remember it. But um, yeah, anyway, it's based on a Nickelodeon cartoon from the late 90s, I want to say, early 2000s. Um, brilliant little platformer. Definitely see this one out, commonly about 30 quid. Uh, next game is another 30 to 40 quid title on eBay. Um, going by eBay prices, um, but to be honest, it pops up in bundles all the time. 
And that's another platformer, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. Um, again, fully boxed, really good condition. Going to go into the collection really well. One of the first Mega Drive games I ever played. And I think this was so we've come from one of the last Mega Drive games to one of the first. This is 1990. So um, yeah, so you basically you play as Michael, and uh, you're you're just going through saving, saving, uh, saving the children uh, with crazy dance moves. And um, it, it's not, the level design really reminds me of Streets of Rage, in all honesty. But um, yeah, decent game. Pretty decent. Uh, played it very, very early on in the Mega Drive's life, so more nostalgia reasons that I've got that back in, in all honesty. Next one, my daughter picked up as soon as she came in earlier, into the man cave, as she calls it, um, and that is Mickey Mouse. Uh, she is just sort of coming round to the Mickey and, and sort of Donald, or should we say Daisy and Minnie. She's got a little Daisy and Minnie playset she plays with all the time. Um, but yeah, these Disney games, they, they absolutely hit it out of the park, didn't they, back in the early 90s. Such great titles. And again, this just cost me nothing. So, um, yeah, really happy to get this into collection and, you know, something she'll play with down the line with me, I'm sure. We'll, we'll have great fun on that. I think that's two-player. One or two-player, yeah. So, Mickey Mouse, World of Illusions. And next game is the last one that I needed for my Micro Machine set. I needed the first one. Now I have it. That was one, one reason I actually bought this bundle. Apart from... Apart from actually the next game, which leads me to another thing that I want to talk about in a minute. Um, Micro Machines. Again, fully boxed. The only problem is this one isn't the J-Cart. I seem to remember there was a J-Cart version of this, which has got the additional controller ports. Uh, but really good condition again. And going to sit really well in the collection. So, the next two games are, um, are games that I wanted to get into the collection because they are a sort of game that I really like. I said I'm getting a CRTV, uh, CRT TV very soon. I'm just looking out for the right one, and um, once I get that TV, I'm just gonna really, really looking forward to playing certain games like gun games and things like that, and just playing the old retro video games on them. Um, but the next time I'll show them together because to be honest, the only reason I bought them because they were both in it, and that is Menacer and T2, the arcade game. Um, they're both light gun games, uh, especially this one. This one's sort of like, you know, the uh, Wii Sports that comes with Nintendo Wii. It's just the standard games, but it just helps you sort of, you know, get used to the Menacer gun. I've been after a Menacer for ages, but um, to get a decent box version of the, the actual Menacer is just it's so difficult. Um, they're just so costly. Um, but I'll find one. It would just be a case of waiting it out and getting the right deal. Probably with another few games as well to add to the Minnesota gun, light gun game collection. I think there was only another two. I seem to recall there was a, a Sunset Riders. Not Sunset Riders. Um, is it Mad Dog McCree as one? Well? I don't know. I can't remember. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm after a Menace. So if anyone's got a fully boxed Menace or anything they're thinking of selling, let me know, and I'll try and work something out. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep on on eBay and see if I find anything. But um, yeah, both of these are fully boxed. Um, and uh, again, the cartridges have been cleaned and sealed. And um, I'm really looking forward to playing this, because I seem to recall I played this in the arcades. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Menacer. I mean, these Menacer games, I mean, who would read the man manual and something like this? You know? but anyway. um, so you've got, you've got four games, uh, six games on here by the looks of it. Um, and they're all just basically target practice. So, um, yeah, really happy to get that in actually, because it'll be one that obviously, you know, my daughter will love playing down the line. So, um, this was the reason I bought the whole bundle, because I've got these in for free. And I sold these games, funnily enough, along with three of the next six games when I trimmed my collection down, because I was like, no, no interest in playing them. As soon as I sold them, I thought, why did I do that? Because it's a series I really wanted to get into. Um, and uh, I'm not much of a fighting game fan, but I really love the look of these games. I really want to love these games. Um, and I'm actually missing the first one, I've just realised. I thought I had the first one. In fact, I think I have got it. But I think it's in my eBay pile over there. But I think I've got the first one to this. But it's probably giving it away. And that is the Mortal Kombat series. Um, yeah, like I said, I wanted to love these games. Because the, the sprites just look so cool. There was nothing out like it at the time. With the blood and the gore. And the fact that the SNES didn't have the versions that the Mega Drive got. Um, that was always a winner for me. I used to love that. Um, but uh, yeah, these games were so brutal back in the 90s. Um, they could 
hit people onto spikes and hit them off platforms and rip their spines out and not the sort of game that I play at all. But um, I mean, they just look so cool. And uh, I always remember Rob really loved these games. So I always have lots of memories of Rob playing them. But um, yeah, these were all free in that bundle. So um, yeah, uh, fully boxed, immaculate condition. Um, and again, you know, they sell commonly from 10 to 20 quid on eBay. So I think here easily I've got a stack of games with the strike games and uh, sorry, with the, from the real monsters up, I've probably got about 200 quid's worth of games there really um, for nothing, just by finding that right bundle. Uh, and that's, that's how you build a collection. I think, you know, it's, it doesn't have to cost the earth to do it. Um, that's what I've always thought. I've been on YouTube now for about 11 years. That's how I've always done it and how previous YouTubers have done it before the current crop of YouTubers that are sort of the new guys now. Um, you know, as to how everyone's always done it. So, um, the next one is Mortal Kombat 3. And this looks like it is literally never been played. It's like immaculate inside. Apart from, as I say, that is a like broken case. But yeah, I think I did that. Um, the manual looks like it's never even been thumbed. It's just, yeah, brilliant. Um, and like I said, I've really wanted to love this game series. And you know what? Going to give it some love. Actually going to throw it on and really, really give it a good playthrough. Especially now I've got the video capture software. I'm really, really looking forward to getting into it. This was one of the games I did play. Um, when I owned it the first time and I really enjoyed it. I just, I was rubbish at it. So um, I'm not a very patient person. So uh, hence why I didn't want to pay full price for these and it looks out for bundles, but uh, that's Ultimate Mortal Kombat. And again, uh, fully boxed in just absolutely brilliant condition inside. Um, yeah, so happy to get this uh, bundle in for, I mean, water over them. Uh, all these would have been water damaged, but uh, yeah, so this bundle here, I didn't pay a penny for, so you know what? I'm so so happy, um, and if, you know what? You can even put those in there as well because I didn't pay for those either. So I just don't pay for video games anymore. That seems to be the way. About I've got to take a drink because my voice is. Uh, I'm talking way too much. But um, anyway, only six more games to go, an accessory, and two consoles. Like I said, six months worth of pickups in one video. And what will be an hour? That's not bad, actually. I, I said to Sam, I'm thinking about it. It's going to be about an hour and a half. But I think an hour and 15 minutes should kill this. I think we'll get this done. So the next one. Um, you know what? I'm not going to show this because I've got an important pickup that I'm not even showing in this. That's getting a standalone video. Um, and that's a video dedicated to my daughter. Um, I'm going to put that to the side because that's something to go with that. Um, it's a video that I want her to view when we give her this present. I don't know when we'll give it to her. It could be when she's 10, it could be when she's 16. But I love YouTube, the fact that it's a bit like a time capsule. You know, you've always got stuff on here. I'll always be able to look back at my old house. I'll always be able to look at my small office that I had, which was basically a garden room. You know, it's tiny back at the old house. Um, I love the fact that she'll always be able to look back on this and obviously our, our other baby that's now on the way as well, um, that they'll be able to sort of see both mum and dad because we both made videos on here. So it's, um, yeah, I love YouTube for that. It's such a great, great platform. Um, and like I said, if you're thinking about getting on YouTube, guys, start making a video. It doesn't have to, you don't even have to get in front of the camera. You can just point something at the table and show what you got and talk. That's, that's the beauty of YouTube. So next game is a game that I've always wanted to get, been on the fence about getting. Um, and uh, it's a one or two player game, and it's Batman Forever. Um, really, really psyched about getting this game. Always toyed when I bought everything back in, say, like the early part of my YouTube life. There used to be a Woolworths pack um, that went around, and I'll put a picture up here of it. Um, and Ninja Bear Hug had one. That was a you know, stew. It doesn't make videos anymore. Um, really, really great YouTuber it used to be. Um, but yeah, he, he's got one, uh, and they were in Woolworths and it came with the, the cassette. I think it came with a, a calendar diary or something like that, and maybe a pen and the game, I seem to recall as well, but it was like a whole set from Woolworths and they're like about three or 400 quid now on eBay. I've never buy one, but the game really intrigues me. It looks like a platform. I've never played it. It could be a fighter. <laughs> it looks either like a platform or a fighter from the back, but I'm going to go with a platformer. Um, because it says over 80 un unbelievable stages. Um, might be a fighter, then, but uh, the film was quite good. I remember watching the film because Jim Carrey was in it at a time. I used to love Jim Carrey, so I still do. Um, but yeah, really, really good film. Um, 
well, really good. I mean, it was, it was pretty pants, to be honest, but no. Um, anyway, oh, that one there. Uh, so, the next game is uh, a game that I got in a bundle along with the next game. And again, this cost me nothing. But a game I have been after, I kid you not, I have been after this game for four years. It's been on my save search, something like that. Something ridiculous like that. Um, and it's a game, it's one of the last Formula One games that were released on the Mega Drive. And it was around the time that I was I was still sort of into Formula One, but not really. Um, my favourite driver was Ayrton Senna. And obviously in 1994, he was killed. And um, this was a game that came out around the time he was killed. Um, so I sort of, I seem to quite least rented this game from um, Blockbuster or Ritz Video. It must have been Ritz at that time, not Blockbuster. And that is Formula One World Championship. Um, and such a cool cover art on a Mega Drive game um, here. I mean, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Look at that. Really cool. I'm a massive Formula One fan. Um, and this is fully boxed. And it's basically, essentially, an update on... I won't be able to reach it, will I? I did see it earlier. I only put these out earlier today. Uh, anyway, there's a Formula One game somewhere up here. And I can't find it. Ah, there it is. Uh, in fact, it's still made by Denmark. Uh, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God, this is going to end horribly. Ooh, you're going to have a good time, as Alan Partridge says. Let's put that back. That's precarious, isn't it? All that just to get this. So this is the game that um, I loved. I pumped so many hours into this game. Um, and uh, yeah, this is basically an upgraded version of it. Um, and this one here, you can see even around the outside here, it's got the, the driver's names and the, and the team names. And it's got the same on the back here um, around around this part here. Uh, interestingly, Etten Senna wasn't on this game, which I was really disappointed about because... He had his own game. Oh, God. Why are they next to each other? So, obviously, everyone knows Etten Senna Super Monaco GP, but because this game was on the SNES as well, uh, they didn't give the license because Sega had the license for this game. Uh, so, Senna wasn't on this, which I was really disappointed about. Um, but anyway, the birth, you know, sort of um, going off on a tangent there. Um, yeah, so, I've been after... Oh, Jesus. Good catch. Um, I've been after this game for so long. Like I said, about four years, it's been a safe search. Really happy to get it into the collection. One, because the box art looks amazing. Any Formula One fan would love that. I mean, that's so cool. Um, and also, the actual graphics on it um, are upgraded from the other one. It's just a lot crisper. It's what the Mega Drive could do. I don't know why I'm holding these up. You can't see them, they're far too small. Um, <laughs> the... Um, it was a lot clearer. Um, the drivers looked more like the drivers, the, the screenshots of them on the back. And also, uh, the gameplay was a lot smoother. Uh, there was more tracks on it, I seem to recall as well. Uh, Monaco was really good on this one. I think Monaco was on this one. Yeah, there it is straight away. I can see it, Monte Carlo. Um, yeah, Monaco was so well detailed on this. Um, for a Mega Drive game, it just sort of blew my mind, really. Um, but it had like the bridges you could go under at the right stage and stuff. But um, and it had all the graphics from Formula One at about the time as well. Um, and sorry, I've just realised I've actually been looking over here. The camera's here, but I've been looking at the top for recording. So, yeah, really happy to get this into the collection, guys. I mean, it goes for about 50 or 60 quid, something like that. And um, I, I just saw it. It was in a bundle of stuff, and it was, it was under... I just noticed this here. Now, it's the same... It's the same logo but obviously it's a blue version and suddenly came as black so i knew straight away what this was um and i don't think anyone else saw it because the actual bundle i got it in i won the bundle for i think it was about 80 quid and it came with a box console which i actually sold two days ago that went um so i made my money back literally with that was some of the games so this was free um and, uh, just the deals are out there guys you just got to keep looking for them um but uh, yeah I just know that's all going to crash down in fact, Just bear with me, I'm just going to put these up because I have a horrible feeling that things are going to fall down. Um, which would just obviously be perfect. Is that falling? Yeah, pretty good. That'll be fine. That'll be absolutely fine. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> 
I probably won't cut that. That's, uh, anyway. Uh, so, three more Mega Drive games left, guys, and then we've got a few more bits and bobs, and who knows, we might hit that magic hour and a half that I said earlier, but if you stuck with me this long, guys, well done. Um, so, uh, the next ones are games that I previously owned and got rid of. Silly. Uh, a bit like my Saturn. At the time, you know, you go through things and you think, actually, I'm not playing these. They're, they're pricey games. I don't need them. But now I'm at the stage where I'm like, look, I want these in my collection. They're games that I've covered. I've got all three of these games on my channel that I've covered um, sort of between eight to five years ago. So I had them quite a long time ago, but I got them all back in. The first one came in the bundle with... Uh, this one here, so it's cost me nothing. Um, but the other two I actually bought. <sighs> I know, I know. Tell me about it. Actually, no, I lie. Actually, the one that's probably the most expensive that I've got, I got for free as well. Not for free. I think it cost me about forty quid for the stuff I sold on. But um, yeah, brilliant. Anyway, that's the future. So the first game is Bart's Nightmare. Now I have a video series on my channel called First Thoughts. Um, and I haven't done a video on that probably for about five years. Um, the last video I actually did for First Thoughts was probably an Ed and Senna cart jewel video. So tying into the previous game that I did. Um, this is fully boxed um, and I seem to recall when I played this I couldn't get off the demo stage, which was highly embarrassing. Um, but I've subsequently watched a lot of videos on this when I, was, when I found the error of my ways and uh, I now know how to play it. So I'll be going back and playing this. Uh, and it's supposed to be a pretty decent game in all honesty. So I'm um, really, really looking forward to playing it. And um, yeah, I actually, it, like I said, if you ever get a chance to watch that video, I wouldn't because it's not, it, it's not, I don't really get off the first sort of demo stage. I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I seem to record just kept getting hit by like random balls bouncing down the street and stuff like that. But it might be fun to watch. Maybe I'll go back and just give it a watch again to see how bad I really was at it. But yeah, really happy to get this in. Um, I think I've shown you this already, but this is fully boxed as well. And uh, it's going to sit great in the collection. So happy to get this back in because it's one I've always looked to add back in and for, for free, effectively. Yeah, it's, it's good. So the next game uh, has cost me... I'm going through the cost here because I like to keep an idea of how much I paid for something. Especially when it's free, um, but these weren't the next two. Um, so uh, this game I actually built, believe it or not. Uh, I ended up buying the car and the manual, and um, I sold on the original car that came in the box because it was beat to crap. Um, so uh, that game is another game that I've covered on my channel, and it's a really, really good game. I used to love playing this, and um, yeah, I've I only saw the film about four or five years ago, and um, it's classic Arnie, and that's True Lies. Finally got True Lies back into the collection. Um, I used to love playing this game when I covered it. I only sold it because it was going for really... At the time, like I said, a lot of money was tied up in my collection, and I was always chopping and changing as to what systems I was collecting for. But now I'm totally sold on look. I'm a Sega, a Sega retro gamer um, with slight Nintendo. You know, I've, I've got lots of memories of the N64. This is Sam's. A majority of these games are Sam's as well, but all these Mega Drive things are the things that I've got memories of, and, and there's, there's loads more down here still to cover. And there's two things down here still to cover, so um, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, going off on a total tangent there. True Lies, um, this is a pretty decent um, game from memory. I covered this on my channel, I think this was one of my first thoughts, or just a Let's Play video. Um, I played so I did pretty well actually. I seem to recall I got about halfway through the game on it, but uh, it's a it varies. You have a lot of different sort of stages. You have some top down stages, you have some isometric stages. It's a bit like the Chaos Engine again when you're walking around, sort of just gunning people down, really uh, picking power ups on, along the way and things like that. But like I said, this actually came. Um, I got the original game. Uh, and it just came, it, it was totally different. So the, the cartridge it came with was absolutely destroyed. The label looked like it had been chewed, everything like that. So um, I ended up buying the manual. The manual came up in an auction. I couldn't believe it, I got it for 13 quid, the manual. Um, which is, yeah, so the manual's pretty decent condition. And it's all PAL, it's all English and stuff like that. And the cartridge, I think I won for 27 quid. Um, so, and then I sold the actual game cartridge for 30, so <laughs> the original one. So I actually got a better priced one, uh, a cheaper version that was in better condition. And go figure, you know, as the manual falls out. Um, 
So this has cost me all in about 55 quid, um, which is about the value that it sells for, something like that, something around that. Um, but all in about 55 quid. Um, and I'm really happy because you've, you've sort of matched up a, a copy of the game, a really decent condition game, um, just by basically Frankenstein and <laughs> sort of all of these different parts and putting it together, but really happy to get True Lies back into the, uh, into the collection and one I won't be letting go again. The same as this game. Now, this one came in a bundle as well. Um, and I took a real punt on this because it was a buy it now with a best offer. And it had been on for, I would say about 20 minutes. And it was just luck of the draw. I just checked it, bundle came up and the bundle was 175 quid. Um, and all I saw was the spine on this and I just noticed the writing. Um, and that is Demolition Man probably hold it aside uh, great film I, I love this film um, and another game that I covered on my channel a review about I want to say about the same time as the true lies actually um, a fair while ago and um, this is a platformer game um, but this is it's funny actually this is a platformer game with elements of the top down as well a bit like true lies and it's it, I've covered it on my channel a little review I did um, and it's actually quite a well viewed video actually it's done quite well um, but yeah, really, really decent game. Uh, the only problem was with this, like I said, I took a real punt on it. Uh, I sold the rest of the stuff that came with it. This ended up costing me, I think, uh, this cost me £25. And all day long, this game will sell between 90 and 140 um, So, yeah, £25 for this. Um, but it is missing its manual. So, you know, I am now looking for a manual. But like I said, with the true lies, a manual will pop up and I'll pick pick one up down the line the game's been cleaned and sealed but it all works and stuff so so yeah um guys like i said it's just a mega haul that i've bought here um but uh, i haven't actually shelled out a lot of money for it so i'm really really happy with that um so um let's get on to one of the accessories um i'm massive into cannon fodder as everyone knows um and uh we all know what cannon fodder looks like but i was just i was intrigued to find out actually if it mentioned this on the case um, because some of them say that they're compatible with certain things. Uh, no, it doesn't. Maybe it's just like PlayStation and stuff like that that it says what it's compatible with. Anyway, I love playing Cannon Fodder. Absolutely love this game, and I've, I've ranted and raved about this game for years. But um, I, a lot of my memories stem from playing Cannon Fodder on the Amiga uh, back in the day around one of my friend Dan's house. Um, and I saw one of these pop up probably about three or four years ago and missed out on it. Um, and I think I got this for £71 in an auction. And this was as the first lockdown happened and it got put away in a box. We knew we were moving. It just stayed in the box forever. Um, and it'll be a review I'll be doing on my channel. But that is the Mega Drive mouse. And you can use the Mega Drive mouse with cannon fodder. Um, it'll just be a lot easier. I, like I said, point and click, being able to sort of actually point on the target and actually go to that target rather than a controller waiting for it to actually go over to that area. The mouse, you can move it around, obviously, like a mouse. Anyway. But um, it's fully boxed as well. This came from, I think this came from Germany, this one. Um, but it's like immaculate condition inside. I'll just get this stuff out. Um, like I said, I'm doing a review on this soon anyway to see how it works with this compared to controller. So it comes with a Sega mouse mat, pretty decent. And obviously the problem is it rattles. That's never a good sign for plastic items, is it? And the mouse is tiny, so. But it's really weird. It hasn't even got the scroll thing on it, obviously. But it's got a roller ball on it. It's a classic mouse, a classic, classic. <laughs> but uh, I'm I don't even know if it works. I mean, it probably doesn't, but let's give it a go. But um, yeah, so I, I added this in, I think, yeah, for 71 pound all in an auction um, on eBay. Um, it's something I've always wanted to get into my collection ever since I saw, um, I sort of always assumed that one existed, a Mega Drive mouse, because obviously you get Mario Paint and you get a mouse and everything like that. It also comes with the instructions and a bit of cardboard insert in there as well. Um, but the box is like in perfect condition. Um, there's no sort of crumpling or anything like that. Um, but there's about, I think I looked on Wikipedia. Uh, and there's about seven to eight games that you can use the mouse with on the Mega Drive. And um, like I said, I'm a big, big fan of Cannon Fodder. It's probably one of the games that gets played 
more commonly from my collection. In fact, when I did my um, video response to Big Game Owl a few months ago, um, and I picked out cannon fodder, I think I even mentioned the mouse in that, saying that I really wanted to try and find a mouse. And lo and behold, probably about three or four weeks after, I found the mouse for it. So, um, yeah, really happy to get that into the collection. Um, a game that I absolutely love. And obviously, I'll be able to now play it with the mouse and obviously see if it brings back memories of the um, Amiga days because I never owned an Amiga but I played on one quite a lot so um, yeah pretty pretty um, happy about that so let's get on to the last two consoles that I've picked up Mega Drive related um, I'm a big fan of the box variants which is something I'm going to go through which is a gift for Roof down the line so I've got another one down here which I bought again right at the beginning of the um, of the pandemic, and it's just sort of sat in the isolation zone, waiting to be cleaned and waiting to be used. But with moving, it just stayed there. I knew what it was in the box, so I just left it there. So it's well and truly cleaned. But anyway, this came in, and I actually kept this from the first bundle that the Desert Strike games, all the Strike games came with. The console was immaculate. Um, now I couldn't sell it. I, I thought I've got to keep this. And I thought, I'll see how the games go, because at the time, obviously, you know, we had a lot to pay for for the house moving in, so I thought, I don't want to tie a lot of games up, but it got to the point where I thought, you know what, it's not worth selling it, I'm just going to keep it, because I've struggled to get one back in this condition. Um, now, Rob had a Mega Drive 1 version, and this wasn't by any means the version that Rob had. Um, Rob's one of my best friends, I've known Rob for years and years and years, so, you know, I've got a lot of memories of Rob. Um, so, you know, things that I can remember, like the thing with Adam with the, with the Sega Saturn, I've got a lot of memories. So um, I wanted to get a, a Sega Mega Drive 1 into my collection, a box one, because of the memories. And I couldn't think of a better version to get. I'm actually taking the console out of this to show you. Um, but, uh, you know, this is like in absolutely amazing condition. Um, this is the Sonic 1 version, as you can tell. So it's a classic version of the Mega Drive. And I remember seeing this in stores all around Portsmouth when I was a kid. Um, it's one of the earliest memories that I've got of the Sega Mega Drive. Um, but we had a Sega Mega Drive 2, which is that one. That's the one that I've got all my memories with. But I had to get a Mega Drive 1 into the collection. Um, uh, also, the uh, Mega Drive Mini is actually based around this, um, this, this actual design. Um, so here we go. That's the Mega Drive Mini, and obviously I'm holding it the wrong way around, and that's the Mega Drive there. So, you know, to get this, obviously I'm, I've got the Mega Drive Mini, but to actually have the actual official sort of, you know, and this is just, it's in such good condition. All of the things are intact on it, all the flaps and everything, all, yeah, it's just absolutely brilliant. So, like I said, the auction that I got with all that stuff in, I thought that some of the games I got, that they, they We'll see how they go in the auctions, and like you can never control an auction how much it's going to sell for. And I was lucky, you know, people kept bidding on the stuff, so I just I thought, well, if it gets a certain value, I'm just going to keep it because it sort of made the money back on it. So, um, but yeah, it came obviously fully boxed. Um, it's missing some of the innards, but to be honest, it sounds stupid, but I sort of bought it for the box art because it's so classic. But you know, even the inner stuff is in pretty good condition. Um, you know, there's no sort of tears or anything as in he drops it there. Um, even on the back as well, it's a pretty good nick. It's got the top parts of the box, which is usually crumpled to high heaven in these ones. And uh, you've got the actual console inside. Oh, God, he dropped it again. <sighs> Jesus. Um, so it's got three controllers, all the cables. I mean, how nostalgic, how 90s is that control? <laughs> you know? um, it was all about the exposed wiring, the exposed... Uh, Sort of soldering. Funny enough, it's only got a. Uh, looks weird with only three buttons on the on the uh, on the actual sort of. Uh, I suppose it's Mega Drive A B C. But um, the manual in here is still sealed. I I'm gonna drop this. so I'm not gonna hold it any longer. Yeah. So this is it sounds stupid, but this is basically gonna. I've got other Mega Drives that I use. To be honest, the Multi Mega is out. That's the one I use for all my Mega Drive stuff. So um, this is actually just gonna sit there, sort of mothballed until. Maybe Ruth wants a console one day, and you know, I intend to make her a retro gamer. So, <laughs> um, you know, this stuff will just be passed down to her down the line, I'm sure. So, yeah, um, a Sega Mega Drive 1 into the collection, really happy about that, and the box art itself. But, um, yeah, and I never thought I'd say it, but we get to the last item in the video as we approach one hour 20 minutes. 
Jesus Christ. I can talk, can I? And you probably just saw it. So, like I said, it's all about the box variant sets for me. Um, I absolutely love collecting the box variants. You'll probably remember I've got a virtual racing box set, which is down there. I would get it out, but there's about 15 other things on top of it. Um, so, it'll be in videos down the line, but I got that years ago. Um, you, there's a video on that when I opened it. Um, I'll do a video on this so you can get a close up on everything, but uh, I managed to score a box set I've been after. They didn't come up on eBay very much. Now, this is the prices item I paid. Um, I think I paid about 350 for this. But it came with other games, so I sold some of those off. So it made it slightly less heavy, but uh, I think I got a pretty good deal. And that is the Sega Mega Drive Sonic compilation box set. Um, and it's, I mean, you can see from the shine on that, this is like, you know, barely been used. The guy said it sat in his attic, it was used a handful of times, but it's all intact. And the, the console underneath is literally brand new as well. So, um, yeah, it's absolutely brilliant condition. Um, and there's the uh, box art. I'm going to do a standalone video for these because I want to cover some of the box variants on my channel. So, I'm not going to do too much of a close up on the stuff, but. I mean, inside, um, I've taken the game out because it's actually on my shelf behind me um, and I've sold off my original um, Sonic compilations that I had because it was it was missing the manual anyway. Uh, the actual console itself is nearly brand new. I mean, it's so shiny again, as you can see. Um, it's got everything on it still. All the flaps are still on it. It's all still sealed. Really, really good. And inside, it's like, um, again, it's uh, pretty immaculate. So... Let's open this up. Sort of getting the hang of the balance in now. So, obviously, you open it up, it's got the little bit of cardboard on top, which is the fully boxed way for a Mega Drive system, which you can't really see because the light's shining, but there you go. Bit of cardboard, and you remove that, and underneath you've got everything. And this thing is like brand new, it's never been used. The, the actual console itself is still sealed, um, it's never been used. So, 350 quid for this. This is only, you know. And obviously it's missing the game, that's actually up on the shelf, around there, I think. Yeah, yeah, just next to It's uh, four, five in from the top there, so about there. Um, yeah, this is absolutely brilliant. So I'm really, really excited to keep getting these box variants in, and I've got another one to share with you guys down the line. But like I said, that's going to be a standalone video for my daughter. Um, it's sort of going to be dedicated to her, really. And um, yeah, so... Uh, Guys, that's it. Hour and 22 minutes. Wow. We'll turn to YouTube, eh? Um, like I said, it's been an absolute crazy, crazy few months. Um, as you can see by the amount of pickups that I've made. And uh, yeah, I won't lie. It's been, um, like, I, like I said fleetingly at the beginning of the video, it's been, um, it's been a, a bit of a crazy few months in regards to the amount we managed to have achieved during a pandemic with a toddler and working as well and you know um things like that but it's crazy times we're living in at the moment so we've just got to make the best of what we've got and um just carry on really and hopefully you now all these vaccines that are coming out um you know things will really start to improve for people but i really hope you guys have all stayed safe during these tough times um and i hope you all had <laughs> Sounds weird saying this in February, but I hope you all have a great Christmas and New Year. Um, and from my family to yours, until I see you again, um, which hopefully won't be too long now because we've got sort of a games room or man cave set up. Um, won't be too long. Um, so until next time, thanks for watching. Please feel free to comment, rate and subscribe and I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.